Hey guys, this is Scott from the Forgot to Grow Podcast. Welcome to another edition of Rewatching Star Trek Discovery. Today I'm going to be talking about Season 1, Episode 4, The Butcher's Knife Cares Not for the Lamb's Cry. Now that's a mouthful of a title, and this episode was pretty good, and I'm just going to be talking about the plot summary for it to start, then just my general thoughts about this episode. Alright guys, so let's just start off with that plot summary, which says Lorca assigns Burnham to study the creature from the Glen, dubbed the, a tardigrade, to find a way to use its biology as a weapon. Starfleet orders Discovery to the Dilithium Mining Colony Corvan 2, which is under Klingon attack. Stemets is reluctant to make such a long jump using the spores, and when the drive is activated, the ship nearly collides with a star. Lorca sends Commander Landry to keep Burnham's research on track, and she attempts to sedate the tardigrade that she names Ripper to cut off its claw, but it ends up killing her. Burnham believes that Ripper was acting in self-defense and is drawn to the spores. Stemets and Burnham transport it to engineering where it connects to the spore drive and interfaces with the navigation system. The ship successfully makes the jump to Corvan 2 and saves the colony. On Takuvma's stranded ship, uh, Klingon leader Kol earns the loyalty of Takuvma's desperate followers and leaves Vok to die in the wreckage of the Shenzhou. Lorel, uh, secretly loyal to Vok, promises a way for them to win the war for the House of Takuvma. Uh, so that's the plot summary for you guys. I'm sorry if I pronounced any of the Klingon or any names wrong because I'm terrible at pronouncing names. Uh, but I enjoyed this episode. I felt this was a little bit more along the lines of a, maybe not a traditional Star Trek episode, but a little bit less focused on the, the war aspect, a little bit more on the um, scientific kind of aspects of Star Trek and that's what I liked about this episode I like kind of diving into a scientific mystery I like that they kind of at first think that this is a deadly predator and all the whole crew thinks that and then there's just Burnham who you know is always an outcast and thinks well we don't know that we're, we're assuming that and I like that kind of dynamic we get from this episode I like that tardigrade thing it's kind of cool I feel bad for it being used as a navigation system I feel like I feel like Burnham's the only one that noticed it was crying and it's like, does nobody else hear this? Everyone's cheering and I get some people maybe don't care as much about the tardigrade as the people they saved, which is fair, I guess, but at the same time, it's not fair that the tardigrade has to suffer for them to use the drive, but that's, I digress. Um, but yeah, this episode had a few cool things. Uh, one thing that didn't get mentioned in the uh, plot summary was that, um, Burnham receives the last will and testament of uh, Captain Giorgio, uh, so that's kind of an interesting little thing because we don't see, we get that right at the beginning of the episode where we see she receives it, but then she's kind of avoiding it through the whole episode and at the end we see her end up watching it. And I kind of like that moment because you see with Burnham she's just kind of like, oh, wow this just hurts because it's like, the captain had made that will and testament before, the, you know, the mutiny and before everything that happened and obviously didn't have time to update it. So it's kind of, uh, I could see why it was such a, a thing, hard thing for Burnham to do and why it might not have, why she wanted to put it off. But I, but I just really like that little interjection of that. I like that we got her to, you know, um, the captain to come back again, uh, Giorgio before, you know, I know she comes back later in the season once we go over to the other universe, but I just like that they, Kept little things of her in this episode, just even that little tiny part. Uh, what else did I have written down? Uh, we saw Lorca's war room, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, it's interesting to see all the different Star Trek war artifacts. Obviously not all of it connects in, but it's just interesting to see. I'm sure some of it does. I'm not an expert on any of that stuff. So I'm sure you guys let me know in the comments below if there was anything you noticed in particular that connects into the original or other Stargate um, series or movies. I've been I'd really like to uh, see those connections if you guys know any. Uh, but another connection I noticed was they mentioned the, I can't, I forgot to write down his name because I didn't quite catch it, but I know they mentioned the guy who invented the warp drive in Star Trek canon. They mentioned his name, they also mentioned Elon Musk and the Wright brothers, and I just, I like that little kind of thing. It's kind of interesting that they decided to throw Elon Musk in, I get it. He's kind of like the modern one, but at the same time, it's, they could have probably picked somebody better, but that's not really the point. My point is I like that they interjected with the warp drive inventor's name, but they didn't also like put a big like sticker on it. So you only caught that if you already know that about Star Trek, uh, which I only kind of know because I know that's in one of the movies. They go back in time, I believe. I don't remember the whole thing. I've been meaning to rewatch all the movies. I just gotta get them on DVD. Anyways, that's not a point. The last point I just have written down though, guys, is I like that this episode focused a lot around the idea of Starfleet being soldiers 
uh, versus uh, being explorers and scientists as opposed to soldiers and that the discovery was a science ship originally and now with Lorca at the command he's like no we're at war this is a war ship and everybody the whole crew is just like well we're explorers and scientists so I just really like that about this whole kind of season in general really that we get that that kind of um what's the word for it uh like almost in balance right because the 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 crew their their motives were more pure and they just wanted to explore things they didn't ever expect to be at war like yeah they knew it was a possibility but they didn't expect to be at this kind of they didn't expect to be soldiers and now they're being asked to be soldiers being asked to make military technology as opposed to just making technology for the betterment of humanity which i really enjoy about this season and this episode in particular you get that uh, exploring the idea of that in this but that's all I have written down for this episode all my thoughts on this particular episode of Star Trek Discovery Be sure let me know guys in the comments below if there's anything in particular about this episode that you liked or didn't like uh, any connections you noticed to the other Star Trek movies or um, TV shows that I missed I'd love to hear those in the comments below thanks for joining me today guys be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and have a good one